All right, so I'm in the middle of flatting here. I've got, through a few different techniques, have started to fill in these different groups in Photoshop. Um, what's interesting is that white is a coloring decision for you in Photoshop. So if you don't have your blank white on, everything is clear, right? So if you want white as one of your flat colors, like in an eyeball, you need to actually flat it in. You have to paint it in. So next I might do something with, and I don't like to use pure white. I like to use kind of a, a warm, like ivory white. So just to continue flatting, I'm gonna use my magic wand with contiguous turned on. I go to my vector, vector layer. But when the vector layer isn't closed like this, I go to my copy of my vector layer that's rasterized. And on that copy, I close it up with my paintbrush. Just like that. See how I close it up? And then I can use my magic wand, select within it, and then add that to my flat color. So I'm going to pick kind of an off-white. That's on the warmer side, kind of a cream. And just use the magic wand and drop that in. Now you'll notice sometimes if you zoom in a lot, because this is a raster coloring, right? You'll see little breaks in it where colors have overlapped other colors. But if you just use, let me turn these off so you can see. If you just use your paint bucket, You, and you use the option key. The option key will turn any tool in Photoshop to the eyedropper. So I can steal that color. And then I can use the paintbrush or the paint bucket to fill things in, as long as I'm on the right layer. Make this a little bit smaller. Interesting. There we go, it's because I had a selection. So often what I do is I just use the paint bucket and then I just hit it again and it will fill that in. Now by using the magic wand so much, this is kind of a quick way of flatting your own work, but it, you notice how it leaves big gaps wherever your um, line art was. Right, And you don't necessarily need that, but because we're going to be doing more and more coloring, I think that's okay. So I'm going to make a few other, all these open wing feather shapes, I'm going to fill that with this ivory color. So I just hold down option to select it, so you can steal colors from yourself that way. And then you can drop them in. All right, now how do you clean up your flats? So notice, this can be helpful too, though not necessary. If I do a, uh, a fill layer on top of my blank white background that's 50% gray, it can be helpful to have that. It's like an extra piece of bread on the bottom. So I can see what's lighter than gray and what's darker than gray and how it's all showing up because this is the challenge of coloring. You want all of it to have color. Now, sometimes you know exactly what those colors should be. So for instance, for the heart little brand, there's a name for that in My Little Pony, but I'm forgetting what it is. I think of it like Care Bears. I know I want that to be kind of a, a sickening pink, maybe a little bit more red. So I can drop that in, but of course I have to do it on the flat color layer. It's important to lock all the layers that, that you don't want to accidentally select. And then for the inside of it, I might know I want kind of a highlight version of that, like a really pale pink. And I could try to drop that in. But I first have to use the magic wand on the vector layer to get it. And then I can drop it in. Okay, so I've picked some crazy flat colors. They're all over the place. But also notice that when I did the tail with the magnetic lasso, it worked okay, but it lost some things. 
So how can I clean that up? Well, I can also use my vector line work and select the outside of it. And then I can say select inverse. And then I can go to my flat color layer and I can erase outside of that to clean it up. Actually, select the inverse of that. So I'm selecting the empty space. So then I can clean up these edges that went over. So coloring outside of your lines is actually not that big a deal because it can be cleaned up later. Oops. But however we get there, and again, we're not looking for absolute perfection. That's how flatting works. Now, I'm starting to get an idea of the direction I want the colors to go. I want them to be pretty chaotic. Um, I can just keep going with that. Like I know I want this kind of bone shoulder blade to be this ivory color. And I can go more and more towards specific colors that I choose. And even using colors that I've already um, used somewhere else, like for all these vertebrae, or I might pick a different kind of bone color as my local color. And then use my magic wand and select all of these contained vertebrae shapes, hold down shift to do multiples at once. I think that's all of them and then just go to my flat color layer use the paint bucket fill them all in all at once right. so look like that but as you kind of find your way with coloring there is a different approach that I often like to use which is to find color inspiration so I'm going to save this in Photoshop and because I haven't saved it yet, I'm going to label it with my name, Carl Assignment 7 Digital Coloring. And it's a spot, so a digital color spot as PSD to the desktop. Now I'm going to look at color reference that I have found. And so you might take some time to reference this. So I found some color references of My Little Pony. There it is. And you know, it's all pretty cliched. Some of it's flat color. Let's look at these differences. This is mostly fan art. So that's a nice flat color example where all the outline was taken out at the end, but you can see how it was colored. This is duotone color. This is just more elaborate duotone color. <laughs> That's more of a digital painting, though. You can see the full spectrum mm. in here. This is very dramatic, soft edge duotone with color holds and special effects. But then the one I really liked was this, because it looks kind of zombie-ish, this cheap vinyl toy. So I want to steal some colors from this and this transparent one, which also looks a little weird and sickly, right? And use that. So how do I steal colors in Photoshop? Well, if I open them both in Photoshop, this is the key to steal colors from something. You have to have them open in Photoshop. Then I'm going to arrange them so that they're next to my image. And I do that by clicking on my image. I have the three tabs and I'm going to go to window, arrange, and I want three upstacked, right? And then I can use the, the borders here to kind of shrink these because all I need these for is to steal color. They're like palettes. So I can kind of shrink them, make this a little bit smaller, give myself as much painting space here, enlarge this. And now when I want to pick a color, say for the eyeball, like I want to pick that pink specifically. This is what I do. 
first I use my magic wand, I go to my vector, I select the shapes I want to fill. Then I go to my flat color layer, I click on my paint bucket, and I hold down Option. Option will change it to the paint drop tool. I can steal that, that pink, which is actually more of a purple. Or I can steal this one, and I can drop it in directly. Let's see, I can steal this kind of strange greenish yellow, and I can use that maybe for my snake's main body. all these stripes. And of course, I could just use the paintbrush and just paint behind directly as well. But stealing color can be very, very helpful. And I often like to do it on gray. So then, for the snout and stuff, okay, I'm thinking this isn't the right color anymore. But because I've already filled it with something, it's very easy for me to just select it if I'm on the flat color layer. And then I can replace it with something else that I steal. And so just on and on like that. until you have filled out your flats. And with something with as many shapes as this, I might get kind of abstract, and just start jumping around a little bit. Let's see. Especially with all these kind of gemstones here. I can do a lot at once. And the color can always be changed. But once you have the flat, then it's a whole lot easier to mess with it. I'm using the magic wand tool, holding down shift to get multiples. These are all the, the drips. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Use the paint bucket, hold down Option, find the color, and drop it in on your flat color layer. And if it's too gory, you can always <laughs> change it up a little bit. So then, here's the really nice trick. Once you have all the flats, I don't have them all yet, but then it's simply a matter of holding down Option and using the paint bucket, and you can just swap the colors, right? And try out different things. Now, I'm still just doing flat color, so we're not doing things like filling it with gradations yet. But those options will come. <laughs> 